See, what we're talking about is, is faith. We're talking about grace. We're talking about righteousness. And we've been talking about this now, I don't know, for somewhere close to a week. And if you want to know more about what we've been talking about, go back on my page, check it out. Look what we've been talking about. You can see all of these pray verse right on Pastor Doug's page. Uh, forever and ever and ever. Welcome to Pray First Air Body. Say Air Body. It's so good to see you guys. I'm looking for my page so I can share this out. Hashtag live if you're watching this during the 7 o'clock hour. Hashtag pre-recorded if you're watching it any other time. Hashtag shared and get this out on your page. Whoop, whoop. Oh man, it's so good to be with you guys this morning. I'm outside on the first day of August 2018, and it is 67 degrees in the Memphis, Tennessee area, which has me looking to the clouds thinking that Jesus must be coming back. Oh, it's a bit chilly. I mean, yesterday you saw me, I had on a jacket, and today is outside and so cool. I hope you have a great day today. Before we get into today and everything else we're going to talk about, we want to welcome all of our first-time guests. So I want you to hit the hearts, hit the likes, and let them know that we are so glad that they're here. Do something else today, guys. I want you to hit the hearts and likes and, and thank our family uh, here at Pray First for being so dedicated morning after morning to put God first. And that's what we're doing here. We're encouraging each other. It's not just that I'm encouraging you. You do understand your presence here encourages me to get out of bed in the morning. Uh, it's starting to get dark again. So when I wake up at five uh, to leave and such, um, I'm like, man, it's sleepy. I'm sleepy. I'm tired. When I get home at six in the afternoon, I'm like, oh, I'm tired. I think I'm just going to, you know, take a break. But then I see you guys and I hear you guys and I see what you're sharing. And then your friends write my inboxes and stuff and say, you know, uh, Glory shared this out. I'm so thankful for her. Loretta shared this out. And then we had this special thing for singles at our church this past weekend. And I, even though I have yet to meet Loretta, hi Loretta, um, I bet five or six people at that singles event came up to me and said, Loretta invited me. So you guys are making a huge difference in our community. Love you guys. So thankful for you. And I appreciate you. I hope I say that enough. I hope you know that I mean it. We're going to jump into the word today because I have a lot of word to read to you. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 through 10. Again, if you want background to grace and, and righteousness and faith, go back on my page to get us up to where we are today. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 through 10. But God, everybody hashtag, this is interactive, pray first. But God, hashtag it, say it out loud. But God. You see verses 1 through 3 says that you and I were dead in our sin. We had a sin account, and it was full of sin. You and I were dead in our sin. We were dead in our trespasses, verse 4. But Paul says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, which he has loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive with Christ. It is by grace you've been saved. Hashtag grace. Hashtag saved and raised us up. Didn't just save us. He didn't just empty our sin account. He raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. In other words, he elevated us. He removed the sin and replaced it with the righteousness of Christ. So now he causes us to sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That in the age to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Listen to that. That's a phrase right there. Write that out. The exceeding riches. Whew, that just gives me breathless. The exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God not of works, lest anyone should boast. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Remember, we're not saved by good works. We are saved for good works, which God prepared hand, God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Hashtag walk in them. God prepared works for us that we should walk in them beforehand. So we get to Abraham in Romans chapter 4, verse 3. So we're leaving Ephesians 2. We're going to Romans 4, 3. What does the scripture say? 
Abraham believed God. Hashtag believed God. Abraham believed God and it was accounted. It was counted for him. It was debited to him. It was given into his account this righteousness that he did not have. He had a sin account. And remember, Jesus comes and erases all the S's and replaces it with his own R. And that Christ on the cross became S for us, became sin. If you're wondering, what is he talking about R's and S's and accounts? Go back on my page yesterday and see what I'm talking about. So here's the question today. What did Abraham have to do to be declared righteous? What did Abraham have to do if there was something to do, if there was something to be done, what did Abraham have to do to be declared righteous? Simply believe. It says, and Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him or it was accounted to him as righteousness. John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. Do you guys hear those birds? There's like a blue jay wearing me out out here. John chapter 6. I love birds. Flowers and birds reminds me of my mom. John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. Then they said to him. Okay, let's talk about who the they and the him is. Jesus is teaching and he is explaining things and the crowd is asking questions. So the crowd is asking Jesus. Here we go. Then they said to Jesus. The crowd said to Jesus. What shall we do? Now remember, what did Abraham have to do? If there was something to be done for him to be declared righteous or in right standing with God, what was it? It was belief. Here's what he says. What shall we do then? What shall we do that we may work the works? Say work the works. Hashtag work the works. What, what shall we do that we too may work the works, plural, of God? Jesus answered and said to the crowd, this is the work. Pause. They ask, what are the works? What's plural? What are the things we have to do? And Jesus said, it's not plural. It's singular, which is in line with his message. Remember when he was talking to his disciples before he was crucified? He said, you've had 10 commandments. You've had 600 laws. I'm not coming to bring 601. I'm not coming to bring 602. I'm not coming to bring 11 commandments. A new commandment I give you, singular, love one another. So he says, here's the work of God that you believe. Woo! This is the work of God that you believe in him who sent me. Man, this is good stuff. But when we look at people in the Bible, this is something, truth I want to get across to you today before we close. When we look at people in the Bible, we think they're superhumans. We think Abraham superhuman. Moses, superhuman. David, superhuman. Peter, superhuman. Paul, superhuman. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. We look at all these people as superhumans and not like us. We look at them as being perfect, as if they had some kind of special graces that we don't have. Seriously, come on, really? Don't we? Don't we? I mean, Moses parted the sea, right? Uh, uh, Noah built an ark. Come on. So we view these people as having some kind of special graces that help them do these things. I need to tell you something. If there's anyone with special graces, if there has ever been a generation of privilege, that generation of privilege and that generation with special graces is you and I. Many of them have found in Hebrews chapter 11, the people of faith were before Jesus. Man, they had to believe in things unseen. You and I can see them. We can read them. We have an account of all of these rich texts that tells us about the life and times and history and power and the miraculous supernatural of Jesus Christ. You and I have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. If there's ever been a privileged race or a privileged generation, it's our generation. These people of the in the Bible were not superhuman. They were not perfect. They were not extra graced. These people were regular imperfect people just like you and I. We hold them on pedestals, but they are no different. Hashtag no different. They are no different than you and I. We think of Abraham. Abraham by faith and Abraham did this. Abraham is a great guy. Abraham was a heathen. Heathen. I want you to say heathen. Now, I'm from the southern 
uh, part part of the United States. So when I was growing up, there were terms we used out of context, context such as this. Oh man, Douglas, you're the spitting image of your daddy, or you're the spitting image, spitting like you know, spitting image. That wasn't even the term. It was spirit and image, and you're in the spirit. Boy, you act like and you look like your daddy, but we got come up with you're the spitting image. Another thing is the word heathen. My mama used to say, "You a heathen." Come on, aren't you? <clears throat> you got to get it right down. You're a heathen. Uh, he's just a heathen, and what that meant was you were just bad. You were bad. You were wacko. You were a heathen. That's all I know to say. But a heathen was really someone who did not uh, have, follow an organized religion, did not believe in God. It was an atheist. Uh, the definition of heathen is uh, an idolater, a heretic, an unbeliever, a non-believer, an atheist, an agnostic, a skeptic, a pa pagan. Abraham was a pagan. He was an unbeliever before he was a believer. He was uh, a, a, a heretic, an idolater. He worshipped idols. He was an infidel. And, and, and we think, man, Abraham must have been something else for God to show up. No, God showed up to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. But a lot of things happened before and after Genesis chapter 12 where Abraham did not do right deeds. He did not work righteousness. Abraham, why don't you say this with me? Abraham was a heathen, and he was part of a heathen nation. And some people say, wait a minute now. Wasn't Abraham Jewish? There was no Jewish. There was no Jewish anything. Well, wasn't Abraham part of the nation of Israel? There was no nation of Israel. It was 500 years after Abraham before Moses got the law on Mount Sinai. Listen to me. Father Abraham, many sons, I am one of them and so are you. Well, Abraham's son was Isaac. Isaac's son was Jacob. The nation of Israel was Abraham's grandson. Come here. The nation of Israel was Abraham. Jacob is Israel. Jacob's 12 sons, 12 tribes of Israel. There was no Israel before Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. So I got to hurry up. Abraham was 80. Um, was uh, he was he was so unrighteous even after he believed to say after he believed so he didn't become perfect mm -mm. did you become perfect after you believed no you didn't so let's talk about this what did Abraham do even after God filled his account with his righteousness listen here when Abraham went into a city one time Abraham's wife evidently was hot I mean smoking hot. So he gets into the city and he realizes his wife is smoking hot and these guys are wanting her. And then the king sees her and the king wants her. Now listen, this is after Abraham believed. This is after he was accounted as righteousness, as righteous. This was after God knew he was going to put in Hebrews chapter 11, the strong people of faith. Listen to this. Abraham lies to the king and says, my hot wife is actually my hot sister. And if you want to have sex with her, you can have her. Did you hear what I said? Abraham, after he was declared righteous, busts up in a city, tells the king his hot wife is his hot sister, and says you can have sex with her. You want to know what's crazy about this? Abraham didn't do it just once. Abraham did it twice. You know good and well she wove his tail out the first time he lied and did this and sold her out like she was some kind of, I don't know, something. And then he did it again. And that's not all. Then, later on, Abraham sleeps with his maid. Abraham sleeps with a housekeeper. Abraham sleeps with his wife's maid and has a child after wedlock. Man. Abraham would have been an awesome reality TV show. Amen. I mean, he was whacked. This was after he was accounted as righteous. I wonder what he did before he believed. You know, we have our stories about how we've changed since we believe. Man, Abraham was a heathen. Abraham had no concept of God. And one day God just shows up and begins to talk to him and says, Abraham, I'm going to send you out. Abraham, I'm going to do this. Abraham, I'm going to bless the name. Abraham, I'm going to do this. Abraham, this is going to be hard for you to believe. Because I know what you've heard about me. I know what your heathen nation says about me. It's going to be hard for you to believe, Abraham, but I'm not here to judge you. 
and I could. Abraham, I'm not here to condemn you, and I could. Abraham, I'm not here to wear you out, and I could. Abraham, I'm here to bless you, not because you're good, but because I'm good. <laughs> Mercy, oh, that's, that's preachable right there. That's almost organist music right there, and a panky towel, and Oh, he good. Well, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, just getting down and dirty with it. Uh, Abraham, I'm here to bless you. Genesis chapter 12, you should read it. So when God says, I'm here to bless you, I need you to know two things. Not only did Abraham believe that God was there to bless him, Abraham believed that God was not there to judge him. Abraham believed that God was not there to condemn him. Abraham believed that God was not there to strike him down. Abraham believed that God was there to bless him. Abraham believed it was accounted to him as righteous. You believe it is accounted to you as righteous. Let me read you this. I'm going to pray for you. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to read you a couple verses, and then I'm going to pray for you. Hebrews 11. Faith shows the reality of what is hoped for. This is verse 1. Faith is... It shows us the reality of things that are hoped for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people of old, the people in the old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel bought, brought his first. It was by faith that he did that. He didn't know there was going to be any more. He brings to God his first, believing that God was going to give more. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man. Okay, Abel's offering didn't make him righteous. Abel's offering was evidence that he was righteous. We are not saved by works. But when we are saved, we work. Saved faith works. Oh man, this is good. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man, and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. Verse 5, it was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. It's like, boop. Just kidding. You could probably still see me. I probably couldn't bend over that far anymore. Anyways, by faith that uh, God took uh, Enoch away, he was taken up and he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible, come here, come here, come here. It is impossible to please God without faith, without active, working faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Verse 7. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. Come here, guys. You can't just believe in your head cognitively. You have to practice with your heart, with your choices with your actions, with your obedience. It was by faith, verse 8, that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave his home and go to another land that God would give him as an inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. Verse 9, even when he reached the land God promised Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise, even though when he reached there, Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. Even when he saw there was this promise in front of him here on this earth, he looked beyond that to heaven. Verse 11, it was by faith that even Sarah was even able to have a child. Though she was barren and was too old, she believed that God would keep his promises. And so the whole nation come from this one man, Abram, Abraham, Sarah, even though she was barren, God gave Abraham a promise and a barren woman. And God says, nothing is too difficult for me. I need to say this to you right now. God may have given you a promise and a barren woman, and I don't mean your wife or, you know, we're not 
that's that's a sensitive issue. That's a reality for some people. I'm talking about God may have set you in the middle of a desert and said, dig a well or believe for rain. God may have you out on the seas right now and you're just sitting still. You're in depression and the doldrums. Maybe you believe that God had a promise for you one time and you can't believe it anymore. Guys, continue to believe. You need to listen. You need to learn. You need to know how, how long Abram waited for the promise, but I can't get into all that today. I got to pray for you. Ooh. Verse 13, all these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised. But they saw it from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners on this earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be for them. Guys, there's more to this life than this world by faith, actively believing God has something in store for you. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would come to them like you did Abraham. Abram, in Genesis chapter 12. Declare your promises with clarity. And Father, I pray that we would choose today to believe, obey, to walk, to act, to do. Because faith without works is dead. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I got to get out of here. I got to go get about it, about it. I got word to do. You got word to do. We got things to do. I mean, we are, we are busy, folk. Amen. Love y'all. Have a good day. Hashtag live. Hashtag pre-recorded. Hashtag shared. Hashtag faith and grace. Tell somebody you love them today. Show them the grace that's been extended to you through Christ Jesus. Bye, guys.